Well, here in this passage, you know, Peter says there are four features of the Holy Spirit during the last days. We've looked at that. There will be a great pouring out. There will be a whole lot of preaching and prophesying going on. There will be manifold proofs both in the heavens above and on the earth below. And last week we looked at the fire and the blood and the smoke and, and we realized that God would manifest himself and show himself in ways that are dramatic from the galaxies above to the signs on the earth below. And of course that last point, that the fourth feature of the Holy Spirit in this passage was that the power of God would be made manifest, that all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. That's you and that's me. All of us who call upon the name of the Lord. Yep, there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in these last days and, and, and there's the preaching of the gospel by men and women and boys and girls and everybody everywhere and, and, and God is showing the proof of his divine glory of his power his majesty of his sovereignty both in the heavens above and on the earth below he's manifesting himself he's showing himself everywhere left and right everywhere where we turn we see the hand of God everywhere even down to the beasts we had a friend here this past week by the name of Justin a game ranger from South Africa and he spoke to our office staff and on Wednesday he was with our young people in crossfire and this is a man who spent years in the bush and he told us things about even the wild animals the giraffe for example this fellow with this big long neck of his has got a big old heart he's got to have a big heart his heart's about the size of a steering wheel the giraffe because he's got to pump blood a long way up Boy, that big old heart of his pumps to get the blood's got to travel a long way to get to his head. So what does he do when he drinks? Well, look at the picture of a giraffe we were reminded the other day. When a giraffe drinks, he spreads one foot out there and another foot out there and he bends his head and he goes down, he goes down, eventually he puts his lips into the water and the problem is all that blood, that massive amount of blood begins to rush all the way down his neck. Do you know what happens when a powerful tsunami of blood rushes down your neck into your head? According to the laws that you and I know about, technically, practically, the giraffe should die instantly. His head would be crushed by the tsunami of blood that hits the back of his brain. At the least, he should suffer multiple strokes. Minimally, it should knock him out. But God had a different plan because every giraffe that has ever been created by the hand of God, according to Genesis chapter 1, has a tiny little valve that big in the back of its neck. And when the giraffe goes down to drink, that little valve snaps shut. And when that blood comes rushing down from his big body, it hits that valve and that valve serves to regulate just the right amount of blood into the back of the giraffe's head. The rest it sends back to spread evenly through its neck and its body according to the law of God. And every giraffe that ever drinks, if you ever watch one again, as soon as he has finished drinking, he will just shake his head just slightly for the single purpose of snapping open the valve that God put there to allow the blood to begin to flow normally through the rest of his body. And so who do you suppose put that valve in the back of a giraffe's head? And God said, I'll manifest my power all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so without the Holy Spirit, my friend, there are three things that you and I cannot do. Number one, you cannot repent according to God's way. If the Holy Spirit is not present in your life, you cannot repent of your sin. 
And without the repentance of sin, you cannot know Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, you've got no control of your sin. Somebody is listening to me right now. You're looking at me, and your behavior doesn't match your profession. You claim to know Christ, but your, your sinfulness does not match your profession. I submit to you that you've never met Jesus. If you are going out to undesirable places and your propensity is to sin against God and you've got no control over that and you are battling with it, it is the Spirit within you who convicts you of your sin. You take the Spirit of God away from any person and I present to you the world in which we live, a world without Christ, a world that has absolutely no concern about sin. And there is a difference between conscience and sin. This is not about the difference between being good or being bad. Sinfulness has to do with the righteousness of God. 